Greetings and salutations, and welcome to Afkadabra. Afkadabra is a utility to automate controller actions on PlayStation. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started right away. If you haven't yet created your account, click on Start for Free, and you'll be taken to a page where you can register. Once you've registered, you'll be taken into the dashboard where you'll be told that you don't have any controllers. Now, throughout this entire process, you can always refer to the documentation, which will take you step-by-step -step on how to create your account, set up your PlayStation, configure your controller, and how to configure actions. But you can also refer back to this video. You'll hear me make reference to various pieces of technology. There's the controller, which is what runs on your computer and communicates between the Afkadabra servers and your PlayStation. There's also the Afkadabra front end, which is the app that you'll log into where you'll do all of the configuration and setup of your controller and the actions themselves. In between these two is the Afkadabra backend or API server, which bridges between the sequences that you create and the controller actually executing them. The Afkadabra controller is a lightweight application that runs on a computer in your home network and connects to your PlayStation. We expressly designed it this way for security to make sure that anything related to controlling the PlayStation stays within your home network and under your control. The Afkadabra servers are simply responsible for keeping track of what the sequence configurations are and handling pushing them down to the client when they need to run. You can download the controller from the downloads page where we currently have versions available for Mac OS and Windows. If you need a version for Linux, hit us up on the contact page and we'll make that available for you. After you download and install the controller, just run it and it'll start. The very first time that you run it, it may take a moment to unpack itself and then you'll be taken to this page where you will need to claim the controller. Click open claim URL and you'll be taken to a registration page where your account gets connected to the controller that's running in your environment. Click add controller and everything is synced up and now you're ready to go. The next step is to configure your PlayStation. Enter its IP and click connect. Now, if you don't know how to get the IP address of your PlayStation, you can get to it from the PlayStation settings under network, view connection status, and if you scroll down, you can see their IPv4 address. That's the address that you wanna enter. The status of the PlayStation changes to unregistered. And now what you need to do is connect the Afkadabra controller to your PlayStation as a remote play client. These steps are a little bit convoluted, but this is what Sony gives us. So this is what we have to do. You'll click on register PlayStation. And here you will be asked to sign into the PlayStation network. You click open login page, go through the sign in process. And you'll be taken to this page that just says redirect. Copy the entire URL, including everything that comes after the question mark. Come back to the Afkadabra front end and paste that URL here. You've now authenticated the Afkadabra controller with the PlayStation network. The next step is to authenticate it as a remote play client with the PlayStation itself. So once again, you wanna to go to settings, come down to system, come down to remote play, and then if you don't have remote play enabled, make sure that that's turned on, and then select pair device. This is going to give you two four digit numbers and back over in the Afkadabra front end, just enter those numbers and say register. And now you can see that OSCAP has connected using remote play. At this point, you are all set. You can begin executing actions on your PlayStation. But before we start doing that, there's some caveats that I wanna make clear to you. First, because this is a remote play client, you can only have the Afkadabra controller or your physical controller connected. You can't have them both connected at the same time. And in fact, because Afkadabra is designed to be in charge of your PlayStation and to reconnect if it gets disconnected. If you turn on your controller, Afkadabra is gonna take control back. The way that you can get around this is to either disconnect the PlayStation, 
and you see that it's disconnected from remote play, at which point you can turn on your controller and log into your game, put yourself where you need to be to do the things that you wanna do, and then reconnect the PlayStation for Afcadabra to take control of it again. The other option is to connect your controller to your computer with a USB cable. When you do this, Afcadabra will recognize the controller and it will allow you to control the PlayStation through Afcadabra as long as it's connected. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Off screen here, I've got a USB hub. We wait for it to turn blue and now you can see that I can control Afcadabra. Now this is not designed for you to play the game. And in fact, if you stay connected for a long time, the system starts to send some corrupt data and we haven't figured out exactly why that is yet. So this is best used by connecting, putting yourself where you need to be, starting the game or whatever, and then disconnecting, at which point the controller will turn off. When you need to do something again, just connect the controller again, wait for it to turn blue, and you're ready to go. If at any point you want to reconnect it to your PlayStation, just take that same USB cable, plug it into your PlayStation, it'll turn blue, and then you can turn it on and it'll take control of the PlayStation. Just make sure Afcadabra is not running when you do that. Before we get into running actions, let's do a quick tour of the Afcadabra interface. The dashboard just shows you what controllers are active and if there are any active action sequences. On the controllers page, you can view your various controllers and within the controller detail page, you can, for example, change its name, give it a description, delete it, control the PlayStation configuration, and then run actions. Actions themselves are under the actions menu where you can edit or delete an action or create a new one. And then of course there's the downloads page. We are doing rapid development, so check this page often and make sure you're always running the latest Afcadabra controller. Let's run an action, because that's why we're here, right? So I am currently logged into Fallout 76, and let's just say that, uh, you know, I was gonna run downstairs or go take care of the dog or do something where I needed to stay logged in. The easy answer is to just rubber band my controller. What happens when you rubber band your controller is it sends an increasing amount of data to the game. And after some period of time, the game is going to crash. What Afcadabra does is it allows you to send a limited amount of data. For example, maybe just once every two minutes, I wanna move the stick just a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. This restricts the amount of data being sent to the game, which allows the game to run much, much longer before it crashes. Now other games besides Fallout 76 may not be subject to the same crashing and you can use Afcadabra to automate any of the actions that you need to within those games. To run an action, visit your controller and select Run Action. And Afcadabra comes with some default example scripts that you can modify or use to learn how the interface works. So I'm just gonna run the AFK stick function, and this is going to move the stick left, wait 10 seconds, and move the stick right. So I'll wait for this nice little countdown here. It tells you what the current status is of the Afcadabra action, and now it's moved again. You have two options here. One is finish and one is abort. If you click finish, Afcadabra will finish executing the steps of the action unless it's just in a hold pattern before repeating, before it actually exits. So for example, we're pausing for 10 seconds between moving the stick left and moving the stick right. So if I say finish, it's actually gonna let that pause complete, finish the stick movement, and then exit. This allows you to return to a known state. But if for some reason you just need to get out of it right away, you can click abort, and it's just gonna kill the action and you're, you're left in the state where you are. Queued action versus current action is something that comes up when you wanna run another action, but you already have one running. And you can think of this as an enhancement to the finish and abort functionality that I just explained. Now that you know how to run actions, let's talk about configuring them. This is what we call the action canvas. And there are a bunch of blocks on the left that you drag to the right that allow you to configure the things that you want your controller to do. The tap button is a press and release of a button. 
So you indicate the button that you want to press, which can include triggers or the D-pad or any of the other buttons on your controller, how long you want to keep it pressed before releasing it, and then how many times you want to press and release. So in the game, maybe I would open the Pip-Boy and close the Pip-Boy. So that's two presses of the circle button. And let's say that we want to perform the action twice and we want to pause for one second in between. You can test any action that you're developing. So I will say start test and we get the Pip-Boy open and the Pip-Boy close. The hold button is designed for holding a button while you press other buttons. So maybe you hold down triangle while squeezing right trigger or any other combination. So first you choose the button that you want to hold and then you can add additional blocks. So tap buttons, pause buttons, stick movements, whatever you want. So we are gonna hold triangle. You can even hold multiple buttons. If you wanna hold down triangle and D-pad up, for example, you can do that. And then you say, okay, while triangle is being held, I want to depress R2 for one second, and I'm just gonna do that once. This is how you can combine macros or button movement combinations within your sequences. A stick movement allows you to choose the left stick or the right stick and where you want to move it. So you can drag this around or you can use these little shortcuts down here for up, down, left, and right. Sticks have two actions. There's a movement, which is called a deflection, and then a return. So the hold is how long you want to keep the stick deflected. 0.2 seconds is enough in this game at least to turn about 45 degrees. So it looks like that. So we could say that we want to move the right stick all the way to the right, deflecting for 0.2 seconds before returning back to center, and it looks like that. A pause is exactly what it sounds like. It's a pause between actions. So maybe you wanted to tap one button and then you needed to pause before you move a stick, something like that. Actions allow you to build what we call nested sequences. So you can embed an entire other sequence of actions inside of this action. You'll use this when, for example, uh, in Oblivion, you need to summon a creature and then cast a spell on it a certain number of times to destroy it, or maybe drink a potion three times. Any isolated set of controller inputs that you need to repeat within a larger set of different configurations, you'll use a nested action for. So build all your components, all your blocks, and then assemble them all together. And then finally, you have the repeat block. The repeat block will always go at the end, and it's a delay before repeating the entire thing over again. It's worth noting that if you have a repeat block in an action sequence that you bring in as a nested action, the repeat on that will be ignored because we don't want to repeat that forever. We just want to repeat it maybe some number of times before moving on to the next item. So now that you understand how the action canvas works, let's assemble a quick example. I'm here in my camp and I'm going to go over to my Mirelurk steamer where maybe I need to walk up, collect from it, and then walk back. It's a little bit contrived, but it's a good demonstration. So the first thing that I want to do is use a stick movement, and I'm going to go right stick, actually, sorry, left stick forward for maybe 0.3 seconds. And then I'm going to, just for the test, I'm going to pause for a second, and then I'm going to go left stick back for 0.3 seconds to return me to where I was. We'll test this, forward, pause, and back. Looking good. Now while I'm forward, I actually want to collect everything from the Mirelurk steamer. So that would be pressing square and then square. So square to open it and then square to take all. Since it's the same button, I can actually just say that I want to perform it twice and we'll say 0.5 seconds between executions or between button presses, that's fine. And then we'll take that pause out in its entirety. And now if we say test, move forward, collect, collect, and back. 
If we do a quick check, ah, we didn't get everything from it. Interesting. Why is that? Because we didn't wait long enough for the menu to open. So let's come back. And now let's pause for maybe 0 0.7. Forward, open, take, back. That works. We can call that harvest and save. Now that would be a one shot. There may not be a lot of reason to run one shot actions, but we'll just test it here real quick by saying run action and we'll call it harvest and we'll say start. Forward, harvest and back. And you'll see that the action has stopped. Well, we wanna wait some amount of time and then repeat this. Imagine that we're just waiting five minutes for new resources to spawn inside of a collector. If we come back in and edit that, we'll go to repeat and we will repeat this action forever and we'll pause maybe 120 seconds in between. We'll say update. Now, When we say start, this is gonna run forever. As I said in the beginning, this example is a little bit contrived and there are better examples that we'll make some separate videos about. In the heart of West Virginia, where the shadows creep and sway, lies a land of rusted dreams, where the brave dare not stray. Appalachia, oh, it's a treacherous ride.